Welcome back, this is the Amajack, and today we got Gunslinger Z Landing Suicidal. And uh, today, what, what else do you think we're going to talk about? <laughs> it's sailing! Um, it's all I can think about. I'm continuing to do more research and look into, uh, you know, how I can best move forward along this, uh, this, this goal, this dream of mine to, to live on a boat and, and sail around, uh, at the very least, West Coast Canada. Um, you know, to be able to get to that point. And, uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of, a lot of research. It's, it's been a lot of time spent, uh, looking at stuff and talking to people and asking questions and getting answers and, like, reading tons and tons of blogs and, not blogs, um, blogs, rather. Um, and, uh, like, I haven't quite got into reading books just yet, but it, it, I'm getting there soon to uh, to start properly learning like all the stuff that's actually on the boat. I'm gonna be uh, buying a few probably ebooks and stuff and reading them to to get uh, acquainted with everything that's kind of on a boat and stuff. Just because, uh, yeah, like I'm gonna be living on a boat eventually, so it's it's a good idea to to get used to what it all is, right? Um, I know, I know, I know a lot of stuff, but uh, it's it's very intermittent knowledge, you know. So it's a, a, a proper proper knowledge would be really really nice, just of the the basics, you know. What what is what? What side is the stern? What side's the port? You know, port is um. I, I couldn't tell you. That's that's the point, right? So read uh, read a book and, and get that knowledge. But for right now, I've just been looking at the uh, the financial possibility of it because if it's not financially possible I'm not sure I want to invest time and energy and all this kind of stuff into to making it work right um, so it's been it's been a lot of just kind of looking at the the finance part of it and uh, how it'll just be affordable and, and stuff um, and, and it's it's incredible how many options are available uh, to me going forward trying to, to learn how to sail and eventually with the uh, the goal of being on a sailboat in the in the long term so option one which is I don't know which one which which option is the best I was gonna say option one's the best but I don't really know that it is you know um, but uh, option one which is what I, uh, I I'm kind of mostly planning to do right now but but uh, yeah, I'm thinking about other options available, but uh, option one is to continue living at my parents' house for uh, the foreseeable future and uh, get the experience I need on boats, see if I can crew on some boats, um, you know, all, all of that kind of stuff to, to get, yeah, the experience, knowledge, and uh, all that kind of stuff to feel confident in owning and living on a boat, um, even if it's not out at sea, just, just off, uh, just, uh, you know, on, on the, the shoreline or whatever. Um. Oh, I almost got it too. Um. But, uh, and you know, it's not like sailing on the shore is necessarily, like, you're more likely to get into an accident at shore than you are at sea. Most, like, boat deaths don't happen at sea, I don't believe. I, I believe most of the time when somebody dies, it's because they got into a an accident just off the uh, off the coast and like haven't quite gotten out into the open ocean yet. There's just like reefs and rocks and hazards and stuff and um yeah. Once you're out at the the open ocean, there's there's nothing to hit. You know, like there, there's other boats, but there's there's nothing to to really like hit. <laughs> you know, like, like there there isn't. You're not going to impact any. You're just going to cruise. It's, it might be uncomfortable, but like, you know, you're not going to, as long as you don't fall off the boat, your boat's going to get where you want to go, you know, like there's, there's nothing really in the way. Um, whereas when you're off, when you're uh, just kind of on the shore, um, just on the coast, um, you're, you're more likely to, to get into, to, uh, to an accident and have something happen. Um, but at the same time you are closer to land um, and especially since I'd be going around just coastal BC um, you know if, if, I, if it ever happened that like 
you know, I, I like something that wasn't death. You know what I mean? Like if I didn't die, which is unlikely, I you know I probably not gonna die. Um, so I'm not gonna go out in in terrible weather and like not be prepared and stuff. Like I'm I'm gonna know what I'm doing, but um. As long as I don't die, I'm closer to home, so I have I have a place to go if if I have to uh, not be on the boat anymore. Whereas if I'm you know cruising around in the ocean, even though it might be safer from like a you know you're probably not gonna get into an accident, you're probably gonna not die, um, you're probably not gonna like have anything majorly happen. Even though it might be safer from that kind of perspective, it's not necessarily safer from like a practicality perspective. You know, like literally. How likely are you to get into an accident? Definitely ocean is safer. But, you know, it's not really super likely to happen in the first place anyway. What's what's more than likely going to happen is um, just... If, if, if I, if, if it, what, what I'm thinking about is going to happen is like the possibility of me deciding I don't want to be on the boat. Um, there's some kind of like super expensive maintenance. Um, that I just don't have the money for, I wasn't prepared for, I should be prepared for anything, but like, you know, some kind of catastrophic thing happens, um, I don't lose the boat, but I, I can't live on the boat, you know, like I have to, uh, haul it out or whatever and, and put it somewhere. If I'm out in like, you know, Indonesia, when that happens, good luck, <laughs> like good luck, you're, you're living on the boat, whether you, whether you have a place to put it or not that's 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 where you go like you know you don't have another choice whereas when i'm here if, if something like that happens then then i do have somewhere to go so um you know safer might be disingenuous um to say that it's safer to sail around uh, coastal bc than it is to sail across oceans but that's the kind of perspective that i'm i'm looking at it from is is not catastrophic failure um, but, like, like, mortal failure, or, like, terrible, terrible stuff, but, uh, you know, boat's no longer ready to be on the ocean, um, or I don't want the boat, or whatever. At least I still have a place where I can go and, like, sleep that's reasonably comfortable, like my parents' house, you know? Like, I'll have a place to go, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna be just stranded. Um... So for the for the first bit, that'll be that'll feel I don't know safer might not be the right word, but more comfortable. Um, even if it's not necessarily a, a safer journey. Um, so anyway, anyway, so that's that's option one is to um, is to live here, learn how to sail around, get a boat in, uh, in a few years, and um, then sail around coastal BZ. It's a good, uh, it's a good dream. It's a nice, respectable dream for sure. Um, very like actionable, you know. Like I can, I I can see how it's gonna go. I have time to save up. I have time to learn and make all the decisions I need to make. Nothing's really getting like rushed. Everything's being done in a, in a reasonable time, and it's it's as safe as it can be. Very little's gonna go wrong, right? And even right now, I think this is the option I'm most likely to go for. Um, it's, it's not like I don't want to, but I think it, like it's the best. I, I think it's the best option. Um, but there are a couple of other options. So, option two is I like, go buy a boat. Um, I don't have like you know thirty thousand dollars to buy one, but I could uh, maybe see about like financing one. Um, and then live on it. I don't know how to sail right now, so like. <laughs> it's gonna be learn real quick um, and then instead of living on it and sailing around BC like I'd be expecting to uh, with option one I'd be living on it in marinas and then on good days with good weather I would then go out for um, you know some sailing and if it was gonna look good for a few days or whatever I might I might stop in it uh, at a fairly like safe protected anchor uh, Anchorage, you know, um, but but just sort of like slowly build up the experience that way, and and eventually move on to um, to bigger and better things. This is the option that is the most appealing to me, um, because no, because um, living on a boat 
As long as I don't get, like, a total just piece of junk. Living on a boat is way cheaper than living on land. Now, if you go buy, like, you know, a $5,000 boat off of Craigslist or something like that, there's going to be an enormous amount of cost associated with it. As there is with anything when you buy cheap. If you buy a cheap car, there's going to be a lot of cost associated with getting it fixed. If you buy something more modern, more new, um, there'll be less. So, you know, you, you can either spend $5,000 and then spend $15,000 getting it up to date, or you can spend $20,000 and have a chip that's going to not cost you as much in the long term. Um, so, for, for me, I'd, I'd probably rather... Um, buy a uh, a boat that was a little more modern. But then the other thing is, is like, you know, if I'm living in the marina or whatever, it is a lot cheaper. It would be a lot easier for me to save up. You know, if the engine's just garbage, I can just save up and buy a new engine. Like, yes, it's expensive. You know, a new engine's going to cost like what five, ten thousand dollars. Like, it's expensive. Lock and load. Right, like. No doubt, <laughs> it's it's very expensive. But when you're when you're saving so much money every month, you can do that. And then that cuts out like if you're planning to that, that cuts out all of your engine maintenance. You don't have to fix the engine. You you can just like you can just sell the engine for like, like it's not a very good engine, but you can just sell it. You don't need it. Like it doesn't need to be there. You know what I mean? Um. <clears throat> so you know. Uh, and then, and then uh, when you buy the engine, you have like a, a decent engine. You know, and if you have terrible sales, again, you can just buy a new sales. It's cheaper to live, so you don't have to maintain it. But uh, a lot of stuff is going to go quickly that you're just going to have to keep up on, like, um, uh, like rigging is going to have to be, you know, constantly kept up on. A lot of the stuff, you know, like you could leave. And uh, and buy a new boat, or and buy like new parts eventually. But like a lot of it, you're just you're gonna be really inconveniencing the people nearby if you're not doing it like ahead. You know, it's the toilet on a on a bath on a on a ship. The the head, you don't really want to like just completely go without one, right? Like you'd like to have one for in case you you just aren't gonna have time to make it to the marina facilities or whatever. You want you want to have it there in case of an emergency at least. Um, you know, at, at the very least, um, you and, uh, you know, like, I can't, I can't think of other examples off the top of my head, but there are things, even on an older boat, that even though you could just, you know, buy fresh stuff eventually, you just, like, it's just, you're not going to be living a very comfortable life on the boat. You don't need an engine to live a comfortable life, but you do want, like, decent electrical wiring stuff. You do want, like, a fairly decent head. You're going to want your pumps to be working. Your bilge can't be filling up with water. Your bilge pumps have to be doing their thing. You can't have, like, you know, you're going to want to make sure that it's, you know, been hauled out and got, like, a fresh coat of paint and, and all that. And, like is clean and you know like there's just there's a lot of stuff on it that even though you could save up over time and and like buy all new stuff like it's just it's just a little bit unreasonable so i think that um if your goal is five years from now to be like already out sailing around to like already be doing that you know like five years from now i want to be on a boat living you know maybe not have been in like a marina for like months at a time like just just like completely free doing whatever i want five years from now like that's that's my goal right like five years from now i want to be out on the water doing whatever i want whenever i want for however long i want you know i think if your goal is five years it's better to buy a nicer boat now so you can learn on it get used to it add whatever little you know nip you know, bits you need, like solar panels, um, better batteries or whatever, uh, and get used to sailing on it, and then actually go sail, so you have, like, a good sailboat, because it's not, gonna, like, it's gonna take, like, I don't know, a few weeks to, uh, to go from not knowing how to sail to being able to go out on, like, a nice day. 
to, to be able to live on a boat, I think you need a lot more expertise. But just to be able to, like, do it on, like, a nice day in good weather, I don't think it's going to be that hard, right? Like, uh, a few weeks of, uh, of learning and, like, maybe uh, crewing on, on somebody else's boat or whatever. You should, you should be able to go out on, like, a nice day and, and single-handed, you know? Like, you should be able to do that just, just fine, I think. Maybe not, like, a, a long crossing or passing or whatever, but, like... Going out on the on the on the sea just to kind of like mess around for a little bit. It's, I think it should be fine. I don't, I don't think it's that hard to get to the point where you can have a certain degree of confidence in going out in somewhere where you've like already sailed and you know that kind of stuff, right? Um. So you know you end up getting that, and then you start sailing on the good days, getting that experience with that boat, and like learning how it all works and figuring out what you need to add to make it proper and. You know, maybe a, a year, maybe two even later, you're 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 out. You know, like you're you've got the experience, you've got competence, you have confidence, you have you have all the stuff that you need to to feel comfortable going out uh, to sea. If you if you're gonna be like, you know, ten years from now, I want to be out at sea. I I think you might be better off buying a cheaper boat and uh, just kind of like scrapping a lot of it. And just like kind of rebuilding it to a certain extent, you know? Um, so that you can get it exactly how you want. You have the time for it. You're kind of like budgeting a, a lot of time for it. I think it'll be better. I think it, it costs a little bit more for sure. But I think it'll be better. But, you know, for a shorter term thing, like five years. And then, you know, the other thing is, is if, if you're like buying a boat now, like 10 years from now, like you're going to have to have replaced a lot of the stuff anyway. Ten years from now, the batteries will have had to be replaced like twice on whatever boat I buy. You know, like it's just, it's just, uh, it's not really a thing so much that uh, you can do. So that's that's kind of why, like, on the longer term, I think it's better to buy an older boat and then just kind of maintain it and keep it uh, clean and all that, and and slowly um, get everything kind of up to date, and uh, then towards the end, add in all the, the stuff that's really going to work down, like get a new engine towards the end and new batteries and new rigging or whatever like whatever you need for for the boat that's gonna go and that needs to be kind of updated it's gonna cost a lot but you have 10 years to save up for it right you're living pretty cheap so anyway that's option two so uh you know buy a boat live on it learn to sail then uh go out to sail around coastal bc in uh, a year or two same time frame that i'm out sailing but i uh i end up with probably more comfort on the boat and uh, probably more money in my savings and uh, I'll have uh, like had the freedom to a certain extent way earlier as well so it's, it's, it's the option I want to take I just I don't have you know thirty thousand dollars to go buy a boat so I'm gonna maybe see about financing and stuff and see how much it would cost to finance like a, a more expensive boat uh, I could do like I don't know two hundred dollars a month to uh, to financing maybe like at the most that'd be like the limit though um so that's that's one option right and then uh, the third option is a bit of a funky one um so rather than buying a boat at all uh you can just go to a marina and find boats that are like apartments for rent. So I don't I don't know like exactly how that ends up working out from a lot of um, the uh, the technicalities. Like you know, on a boat, there's a lot of maintenance to do. That's kind of like every day. I'm not gonna be able to just call up the you know land lord, so to speak, for for that kind of stuff. Like you know. You have to check the the dock lines every day, and you're gonna have to check your bilge, and you're gonna have to, you know, there's all these things that are kind of like daily maintenance on a boat that you just kind of have to do. And uh, you know, if I was renting in a boat, I'd probably have to take care of that stuff, and then um, some other stuff would probably be, you know, call up the landlord. Like if the electrical was failed, or if the the head was just messed up. Like if it's just clogged, that's probably a me thing. I did that, you know. Um, try not to do that. <laughs> but like if it's just like destroyed because of uh you know general wear and tear or whatever 
um, might call them up for that. Like I don't, I don't know exactly how it works, right? Like I don't know uh, at what point does it go from, you know, this is what you have to do to live on the boat, because like it's just this, this is what you're doing, to um, to uh, you know, yeah, like you call me out and I'll fix it. You know, like I don't know where that that line kind of gets drawn. Um, I'm fine with doing all of the work, but the other thing is, is I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the work confidently on somebody else's boat. Oops, that's bad. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do all the work on somebody else's boat because I don't have the experience necessary to make that happen, you know? So, I don't know. Um, but it's it's another option to, to just rent. I wouldn't own a boat. Uh, probably wouldn't be able to take it out either, is the other thing. Um, and then... Um, you know, just just that kind of stuff. But it would get me closer to, it would get me on the marina. It would get me closer to other people who are able to teach me, who I'm able to learn from, who I'm able to build connections and relationships with. Um, get me closer to where I'm going to be taking, you know, any lessons or to where I'd be, you know, crewing on uh, on somebody's boat or whatever. Um, it would be more affordable than rent anywhere else here. So it's uh, it's a tempting option. and I don't know which of these I'm going to do. Again, what I want to do is I want to buy a boat and live on it. And just commit. You know, like that's that's what I, I want to do. That's that's my, my favorite choice. My preferred choice. It's just... Like, it's... it's, it's uh, I don't know if I can get the money for it. So... I'm sorry. I'll have to start a GoFundMe. You guys gonna you guys gonna spend twenty thousand dollars to help me buy a boat? Is that how this is gonna go? Obviously not. Um, I'm kidding, of course. But uh, yeah, it's um, those are the three options that I kind of have for going forward. So either like don't buy a boat for a while and just learn to sail and sail on other people's boats. Buy a boat and live cheaper and then spend that money on the boat and learning to sail and stuff or rent somebody else's boat so I'm closer to um, where uh, all the boats are and where lessons are and where people are uh, have fewer responsibilities and lower rent and uh, end up with um, end up with uh, you know, more money to spend on, on lessons and other stuff and, and uh, you know, continue going out crewing on other people's boats and, and getting that experience that I need and then save up for boats. It's kind of like, option three is kind of like option one, but easier in a sense. And honestly, like a lot of people, what I've been talking about this stuff with people is, uh, they're, oh my good God. A lot of people are talking about the space thing on a boat, you know? Because you're really limited on space. Like, you're going to have to get rid of a lot of stuff. You're going to have to really decide like what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I I reckon 30-foot boat, I wouldn't have to get rid of much. Um, my bed, yes. Dresser, absolutely. Desk, yep. Computer, all my monitors, TV, yep. Um, no doubt. It'll all be gone. But... You know, I'd have a different bed on the boat. I would have a different TV on the boat. I would have a different, I'd have a laptop. I'd have a different, you know, desk, different, you know, no computer chair, but I'd have a different chair. And like, you know, like most of the stuff that I'd be getting rid of is, is just cause like, 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 it's not like I'm getting rid of having a chair. I'm just getting rid of this chair. And, um, it's not like I'm getting rid of the ability to have a computer, I just can't have this one. I'm not getting rid of a place to put my clothes, I'm just getting rid of that place to put my clothes, you know what I mean? Um, but like my stuff, the the things that I have, like I have a, a binder right here, I have, you know, various sex toys, <laughs> I have a cell phone, 3DS, I've got, um, you know, water bottles, I have um, clothes. Like I have, a, I have a favorite pillow. I have, um, you know, some cutlery and um, kitchenware and stuff. Like for the most part, 
Back in the game. I, I guess the way it goes is I live in this room. It's probably got about as much space as the ship would have. I don't, like, have stuff outside of my bedroom. And it's not a very big bedroom. It's not a very small bedroom, but it's not a very big bedroom either. So living on a, on a boat, the, the space is, is really, like, one of the things I, I just kind of don't worry about at all. Because, um, like, I don't know, I, I just, I don't have much stuff. You know, I don't have, like, a ton of books. I don't have, you know, like, a bunch of knickknacks and paddy wax and toys and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, even assuming, you know, I'm going to have to have other stuff on the boat that's kind of taking up space that I don't have in my room. Like, I just, I, just, I, I don't think the space thing... For storage is really going to be a, a major problem for me. Like I've I've uh, I've, I've kind of been planning to, to live in a, in a fairly small like trailer in a in a, uh, a trailer park. You know, like the the space part of it is is one thing that uh, just like completely does not bother me um, about uh, about the the living on a boat kind of lifestyle. But a lot of people bring it up. It's like the most common thing people bring up. Like, you're not going to have much space. You're going to have to get rid of your stuff. I'm like, I, I really just don't think I will. Like, a lot of it is going to have to go just and be, like, replaced by other things to, like, you know, that fulfill the same purpose, just slightly worse, really. Um, you know, like, my bed is better than whatever bed I'd get on a, on a ship, probably. I don't know. It's actually a fairly old mattress, so it might actually be an upgrade. Um... But, you know, it's, like, it's, ju it's just the, the space issue for me is minuscule, if even, like, an issue. Um, so that's that's one thing that people bring up all the time. And then another thing that people bring up all the time is they're like, well, you're not going to have, um, you know, you're going to have to be really careful in the wash. I'm like, I just, like, a lot of the stuff that people bring up about the living on a, on a sailboat lifestyle, I'm like, yeah, I kind of, like, plans to live in a, in a trailer, so... Like, I'm not really super duper. It's not. It's you know. Th th there's more maintenance involved. There's more water involved. But you know, at the end of the day, the 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 kind of like you know life that you lead is is reasonably similar. Um, you know, like how much stuff do you have, and kind of being frugal and um having to like figure out where the heck you're gonna put your groceries because you just don't really have much fridge space and you know that kind of stuff like that's I don't know that 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 stuff is I guess what I'm saying is whether I buy a boat or not you know that those are problems that I'm gonna be facing regardless of whether I buy the boat or not so I just I don't really care I don't really care about it it doesn't really matter um you know, the boat is more expensive to live in, for sure. Well, sort of. It's kind of more expensive. Sort of. Because uh, it, it's cheaper to, like, it's easier and cheaper to, like, find a place to live when you're in a boat. Right, like a legal place to live. It's uh, it's easy to find an, an illegal place to live when you're in a trailer, um, but but when you're in a boat, it's it's really easy to find uh, a legal place to live. At least where I live, um, you know, in a lot of areas, uh, liveaboards not really welcomed and not really available either. Like even on the marinas that do accept them, they have few lim they they have limited slips. Not really like a problem here. Uh, there's lots of available slips, lots of boats that come with a slip included, like, it's just it's not really a problem to find a place to live. And then, you know, when you're a little bit more confident, like, you can just go anchor pretty much anywhere. And just live at Anchorage, you know? Like, that's fine. It's a little more rocky. But, um, yeah, it's fine. People do it, you know. There's there's people who live at uh, at anchor like you know 300 and some odd days of the year, you know. Like it's 
not that bad. Like, it's bad, but it's not it's not it's not unlivable, I guess. You know what I mean? And it's free. Outside of the like, you know, you still have to eat, you still have to like, you know, fix your boat and stuff, but like you're not paying anything to to the moon. You're not paying anything to to just put your boat there. Um so that's fun. Some anchorages do have a fee. Um Sometimes you, you end up going to like a, a bay or something like that, and there's like uh, mooring balls or whatever. And uh, so you end up tying up to those. And at the bottom of there, they like it's it's these little like buoys that just kind of float in the water. Um, and then they have like a, a long chain attached to this like very, very heavy cement slab at the, uh, at the bottom of the water. So it's not going anywhere. Um, it's like heavier than pretty much any anchor you're going to put on your boat. And it's pretty stable. Um, so you end up uh, you end up going there, and then sometimes those will have a fee associated with them. Sometimes they won't, but uh, it, it's usually a thing that uh, you have to pay to stay at one of them. Uh, again, because that's something that's actually like safer. You know what I mean? Like there's there's some kind of maintenance going on. There's some kind of um, structure involved that 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 costs money, right? Um, you're near. You're nearer to civilization. You're in the way. There's like a you know they're trying to restrict the number of boats and yada yada yada, right? Um, so sometimes those can cost money, but uh, just go to a different one if you don't want to pay money, dude. And and I believe that the the mooring balls are also like quite a bit cheaper uh, than marinas because at a marina you're like quite safe. You have uh, like a proper dock to just be at. Like when you're when you're at a mooring ball, like you're still in the ocean. It's just, it's just like a big fancy anchor, basically. That, uh, you know, instead of letting it down, you just kind of, like, tie yourself to it. It's already there. You know what I mean? Um, it's, just, it's just like it's a big fancy anchor, right? So you don't really get to uh, just, like, walk off your boat. You have to, like, hop in your dinghy or on a paddleboard or on something and, like, make your way back to, to land. And uh, If you don't have a place to put your dinghy, then, you know, you get off your... You get off your boat, hop in your dinghy, think, you know, head back to land. Where do you put it? You know, that's always a fear. Hope it's there when you get back. They don't have a place to, to leave them, to lock them up, so. That can be a concern. Whereas at, uh, at a marina, in a, in a harbor, you know, you just kind of get to walk off your boat. Because you're just right there to dock. You're in a nice little slip. It's a good, it's a good place to be. But, um, more expensive, so. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's looking more and more doable. Is kind of how it's going. I might start looking into uh, financing a boat. Um, cause yeah, like thirty thousand. I don't know, like I don't know. There, there's two hundred dollars is probably the limit on what I could afford for financing on a boat. Just kind of like thinking about it. My uh, my estimation of about one hundred and fifty, maybe two hundred dollars for the uh, the maintenance on a boat while you're just kind of like sitting at uh, in, a, in a marina. Pretty accurate. Uh, assuming you get a uh, a newer boat that isn't uh, too old, but those are expensive, so financing. Um, and uh, you know, end up seeing how much it costs. And then you also have to have like boat insurance, although that's generally pretty cheap. Uh, I've talked to some other people around here, and it seems like it's about seven hundred bucks a month or something like that for, uh, or seven hundred bucks a year. <laughs> A month is a little bit, uh, woo -hoo. uh, 700 bucks a, a year for the, um, for the insurance on, a, on, like, a 30-foot boat, so. But, yeah, it's, 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 like, it's barely out of reach for me at the moment. Just, like, barely, you know? Like, if, if a boat just fell into my lap, like, a, a good, solid boat with with you know new stuff on it and not not like decrepit and old and stuff you know like a a, a safe proper 30 foot sailboat if it just like fell into my lap you know if i just walked down a marina and somebody's like hey you want this boat and i'd be like all right and they just give it to me and it's like a good boat like if that kind of thing happened i'd be able to like live on a boat like today i could i could just go do that you know um, 
the the issue, however, is that uh, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> that's not. It doesn't work that way. Um, you know, I have to actually get the boat. The boat itself is the expensive part, though. That's it. It's remarkable how cheap it is to live on a boat, though. Um, somebody who was telling me that it's more expensive than I expected it to be uh, sent me a, uh, a link to a paper that kind of like went over how much it costs to actually maintain a boat. And it was like less than I expected it to be. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know what you're trying to convince me of here, but um, cool. But it's it's like really you're looking at like five thousand, maybe six thousand dollars a year for like a, a thirty foot boat and the the annual sort of maintenance that you're gonna have to do on it with the haul out and you know maybe some new paint, some zinking, you know whatever you're gonna have to do on it, like maybe five or six thousand, um, which is like not that bad. That's manageable, you know. So I don't know, man. It's, uh... Oh my good god. Um... Back in the game. So yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, like... Possible. To, to do. And, and it's, it's, not, it's not like a, a millionaire-only kind of exclusive club. Like, people that live on, uh... On boats are, generally speaking... Not rich. Um, generally. Now, they're not necessarily poor, but um, they're not necessarily rich either. So it's uh, it's, it's kind of cool to see that. Like they're not you don't you don't have to be a millionaire to own a boat, you know. Or is this kind of where I was uh, where I was at before, where I was, what I was thinking before? So it's really really cool to see that it is affordable and uh, manageable. I just have to figure out how the heck I get a boat that is safe to be on, because that part is a little bit outside my budget, unless I save for a few years, which is kind of my plan. I, but I, I want to get on a boat sooner, so I don't know. I'll have to. Yeah, the, the, the other thing is, I could buy a boat sooner if I were to like sell stuff. You know, like if I sold my car, sold my computer, um, you know, took money out of my savings and investments and stuff. Like, yes, I could. I could afford a boat, a, a reasonable boat. You know, I, I could I could do that in, in you know in, in a few months of uh, of, of kind of like prep work and um, selling stuff and and getting to the, that point I could I could put together enough money to, to comfortably get a down payment on a boat just fine, right? And I, I'd I'd be comfortable like going to like a, a a bank or something like that and taking out a loan or, or whatever and, and buying a boat, right? That's that's doable. The issue is that uh, doing that so early. I've, I've never lived on a boat. I've never slept on a boat. You know, like... I have no way of knowing with, you know, more than like 70% certainty that it's definitely going to be what I want, you know what I mean? And if it isn't, if I decide I don't like it afterwards, then... I've already sold all my stuff. I'm, I'm out of, like, I'm out of everything. Uh, that's bad. So, I don't want to do that. If I'm going to be living on a boat earlier than I expected, I'm going to be, uh keeping my stuff until I've lived on it for a bit and decided that yeah no this is this is the life that I want then I'll sell my stuff I'll have a bit of extra spending cash to, to spend on uh, on boat upgrades you know maintenance and stuff like that um, keep my savings and my investments I don't have to like dip into those like you know like that kind of stuff right like I want to be more prepared I want to have the ability to if I'm gonna be getting a boat sooner rather than later before I actually have any experience like sailing really I want to. I want to not commit to it with a hundred percent. This is what I'm doing. If I fail, biggest mistake of my life. You know what I mean? Um, whereas if I if I spend a few years, then I'm fine with selling stuff when I buy a boat because like after a few years of sailing, crewing on boats and stuff like that, if I'm still like, yes, this is what I want to do, I'll be I'll be more confident that like yeah, you know, this is definitely something I'm I'm willing to commit to. But uh, just just kind of immediately? No, it's it's a bit too much of an ask for me. 
I just I don't want to I don't want to do anything stupid. You know what I mean? I'm willing to do things that aren't wise. I'm willing to do things that are perhaps poor decisions to make. I'm I'm willing to make mistakes. I'm willing to make um you know I'm I'm willing to make mistakes. I'm willing to mess up. I'm willing to to have a, a, a pretty rough ride getting to my goal. What I'm not willing to do is do something that just looking at it is like, no, this is just a terribly stupid decision to make. Um, so anyway, I'll have to see if I can find uh, a way to get a boat. A, a good boat. A comfortable boat that doesn't have you know anything wrong with it. That I can then live on and, uh, and learn how to sail and actually take out and do all kinds of fun stuff on it. You know, that's that's what I need. But uh, it's just that's that's the part that's outside my budget right now. It's just it's just the acquisition. You know, the upkeep is affordable. I can afford the marina fees. I can afford the. Uh, I can uh, yeah, I can afford the marina fees. I can afford the um, like maintenance. I can afford you know all the things that I need to to be able to continue owning the boat. That's affordable. Getting the boat isn't. So it's like it's like it's just out of reach right now. This this dream of mine. It's like it's like I'm just at the precipice of uh, of of this dream. Just just right there. It's just around the corner. Um, but I, I think I think what I'm gonna have to end up doing is just kind of letting the excitement kind of die down to a certain extent anyway. And um, just kind of go back to, to my original plan, which was to just wait a few years, learn how to sail, buy a boat then, and uh, immediately take it out, basically, you know? More or less, anyway. Um, I, th I think that's, I mean, that's definitely the most responsible way to go about it. But I can't, I can't lie. If I had, if I had you know, $50,000 right now, I'd, I'd be buying a boat, like, now. <laughs> you know, like, like it would be, it would be a now thing if I if I had fifty if I had fifty thousand, you know, in my pocket. I'd, I'd be like, screw it, let's do it. If it's a mistake, whatever. I lose like you know a bunch of money, but I have, I tried. You know, I'm I'm willing to 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 lose a lot to try. I'm not willing to, you know, like, completely uproot my life. Mistakes are one thing, but but it's it's a whole other deal when when you start just kind of like getting rid of stuff to to make this this come true and it doesn't work out it's it really feels bad so i don't want that to happen i don't think it will i think i'll be happy with it i'm like 90 percent confident that i will but i only i only really have like 70 percent confidence that uh it'll be what i want you know what i mean so i don't know i think what i might end up doing is uh is maybe renting a uh a boat in a marina on a liveboard just just a, a sort of like permanently docked one there see if i can't uh, make that work that way I get experience living on a boat, having that kind of, uh, those tight quarters, um, I'm able to save a bit of money, and, um, you know, be closer to where I'm going to be learning, build relationships and connections and stuff like that, but I don't have to, like, have this huge upfront investment, I don't have to have this, like, finance plan and all of these things that are going to be bad for me in the long term, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now, is, is probably going with the third option and, and renting a boat somewhere, but... You know, we'll see. I'll keep you updated on uh, on what I'm doing exactly. I don't really know though. I don't really know. What I want is is just to have like fifty thousand bucks dropped into my lap so I can go buy a boat and live on it. But uh, it's not gonna happen. I don't play the lottery, so I'm not gonna win. You know. Anyway, it's gonna do it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.